we're going to be talking about cell membranes. Cells are the structural and functional unit of living organisms. Cells contain many important organelles, such as the nucleus, which houses the DNA, ribosomes, which are protein synthesizers of the cell, mitochondria, which is the powerhouse of the cell, and many other organelles. However, we're going to focus on one of the most important organelles, which all living cells have, the plasma membrane. The plasma membrane, or cell membrane, is essential for the survival of the cell. It controls how substances move in and out of the cell and is responsible for many of the properties of the cell. The cell membrane is called a lipid bilayer because it is composed of two layers of fat cells organized in two sheets. The lipid bilayer is typically about 5 nanometers thick and surrounds all cells. The most abundant class of lipid molecules found in cell membranes is the phospholipid, which are amphipathic, meaning they have a part that likes water and a part that hates water. The phospholipids are arranged in a bilayer with their polar, hydrophilic, water-loving heads facing outwards and their non-polar, hydrophobic, water-fearing tails facing each other in the middle of the bilayer. Lipids are one of the major macromolecules that are found in living things. What makes a phospholipid different from other lipids is that it has a head that has a charge to it. The head consists of a choline, phosphate, and a glycerol group. It is the phosphate group that gives the head of the phospholipid its charge and hence it is able to easily interact with water. Since phospholipids are fats, like any fat, most of the phospholipid is made up of carbon and hydrogen, also referred to as a hydrocarbon. These fatty acid chains mostly consist of carbon-carbon single bonds. In other words, the chains are saturated with hydrogen. Fats made up of saturated fatty acids are solid at room temperature. However, fatty acid chains may have carbon-carbon double bonds, which adds a kink in the structure of the chain Hence, they don't pack as tightly. These unsaturated fatty acids are liquid at room temperature and are therefore known as oils. Phospholipids can form spherical, single or multi-layer vesicles when placed in an aqueous solution. They organize themselves in this manner in order to hide their hydrophobic tail regions and expose the hydrophilic regions to water. This organization is spontaneous, meaning it is a natural process and does not require energy. This structure forms the layer that is the wall between the inside and outside of the cell. The plasma membrane keeps the contents of a cell separate from the environment surrounding it. In addition to phospholipids, the plasma membrane has proteins that allow the membrane to function properly. Proteins embedded in the membrane play important roles in helping the cell communicate with its environment, including with other cells, and with transporting materials into and out of the cell. There are two main types of membrane proteins, those that transverse the membrane called integral proteins, such as protein channels, and those that are stuck on the inside or outside of the membrane called peripheral proteins. Integral proteins are often involved in the transport of materials, while surface proteins generally function in cellular communication. Carbohydrates are found on the outer surface of all eukaryotic cell membranes and are attached to the membrane proteins or sometimes to the phospholipids. Phospholipids with carbohydrates attached are called glycolipids, while proteins with carbohydrates attached are called glycoproteins. In addition to these components, the plasma membrane has cholesterol molecules that are primarily responsible for giving the membrane the rigidity it needs to hold the cell's shape. All of these membrane components, lipids, cholesterol molecules, and proteins, can move laterally or side to side through the membrane. So we consider the membrane as kind of a fluid. Also, because the membrane is made up of a number of different components, it is also considered to be a mosaic. These two ideas come together in what is known as the fluid mosaic model of the plasma membrane. 
The interior of the phospholipid bilayer is hydrophobic, so only very small neutrally charged molecules like oxygen or carbon dioxide can pass freely through the membrane. Everything else must pass through a transmembrane protein, meaning the cell has general control over what gets in and what gets out. A few substances can diffuse directly through the lipid bilayer part of the membrane. The only substances that can do this are lipid-soluble molecules, such as steroids, or very small molecules, such as gases. For these molecules, the membrane is no barrier at all. Since lipid diffusion is obviously a passive diffusion process, no energy is involved and substances can only move down their concentration gradient. Passive transport is the transport of substances across a membrane by a transmembrane protein molecule. The transport proteins tend to be specific for one molecule, a bit like enzymes, so substances can only cross a membrane if it contains the appropriate protein. As the name suggests, this is a passive diffusion process, so no energy is involved and substances can only move down their concentration gradient. There are two kinds of transport protein. Channel proteins form a water-filled pore or channel in the membrane. This allows charged substances, usually ions, to diffuse across membranes. Most channels can be gated, opened, or closed, allowing the cell to control the entry and exit of ions. On the other hand, carrier proteins have a binding site for a specific solute and constantly flip between two states so that the site is alternately open to opposite sides of the membrane. The substance will bind on the side where it is at a high concentration and be released where it is at a low concentration. Active transport is the pumping of substances across a membrane by a transmembrane protein pump molecule. The protein binds a molecule of the substance to be transported on one side of the membrane, changes shape, and releases it on the other side. The proteins are highly specific, so there is a different protein pump for each molecule to be transported. The protein pumps are also ATPase enzymes, since they catalyze the splitting of ATP into ADP and inorganic phosphate and use the energy released to change the shape and pump the molecule. Pumping is therefore an active process and is the only transport mechanism that can transport substances up their concentration gradient or against their concentration gradient. The sodium potassium pump, this transport protein is present in the cell membrane of all animal cells and is the most abundant and important of all membrane pumps. Thank you for tuning into Biology Made Simple. Please tune in for more videos.